Welcome to chapter two of your introduction to financial accounting uh, course. In this chapter, we're going to be building off of what we saw in chapter one. So in chapter one, if you recall, we really just scratched the surface on uh, what the financial statements are, right? We talked a little bit about some of the accounts, some of the classifications. Uh, but in this chapter, we're going to be taking a deeper dive specifically on the statement of financial position. Because this is really arguably the most important statement because it shows you how much the money the company has, what the company is worth, how much debt the company has. It really shows you the, the health, if you will, of the company. So now some of these will be a repeat of what we talked about in the first video, but I wanted to, um, again, break it down in case you missed it or go a little bit deeper in case you didn't. So on the statement of financial position, remember we have assets, liabilities, and equity. Now we're not going to go over what those mean because we did do that in the first video, but let's go deeper into the category. So there are really five categories of assets that you should know about. There's current assets, investments, property, plant, and equipment, or PPE, intangible assets, and goodwill. So let's run through that, right? Current assets. Remember, current assets are assets that are going to be used, sold, or in any other way converted to cash within 12 months. For example, your inventory, right? When you have inventory, typically the, the, the uh, intention is to sell that inventory within a year. It's pretty rare that you're buying inventory today that you plan on selling five years from now, right? So inventory would be an example of a current asset. Supplies, cash, accounts receivable, right? All of these, most of your assets, in fact, would fall into the category of current. I've given you a list here of the more common ones. And then you have investments. So Basically, the remaining four categories are all classified as non-current assets. Investments are one of those. These are investments that the company has made into debt or equity instruments issued by other companies or issued by other people. What does that mean, though, debt instrument, equity instrument? So a debt instrument is a loan, right? Really put simply, it's a loan. Um, so your company could lend money to another company, could lend money to another person, right? These are called debt instruments, and they generate income for the business. These are investments, after all. Debt instruments will typically generate interest revenue for the business, right? So if you lend money to somebody else, or if you invest in a bond, which we'll talk about later in the semester, or a note issued by another company, well, that company will pay you interest uh, because you lent them the money, right? So that becomes revenue. And then equity is just another way of saying stocks or shares. So a, a corporation can own shares of another corporation, right? Those would be called equity instruments, and typically they generate uh, dividend revenue or other types of investment revenue. Okay, so these types of investments would be classified as non-current assets. They would be called investments, long-term investments is typically what we'll call it. Now, just to quickly go back on one thing we, we didn't talk about here, just because now we talked about long-term investments, you also have short-term investments, which we often call trading investments. These are very short-term, typically less than three months, investments that the company makes into various financial instruments, right? A company might buy, let's say, shares of another company, but with the intention to resell them very quickly, in which case it wouldn't be a long-term investment. It would be a short-term investment. Or, you know, you might buy government, uh, you know, securities issued by the government or investments issued by the government, again, with the intention to sell them very quickly, right? To earn a profit on the, on the, the change in price. The same way you would buy stocks with the intention of selling them very quickly if you were trading, companies can do that. And we would classify that as a short-term or a trading investment. Now, carrying on, PPE, property, plants, and equipment. This is also non-current asset. These are your tangible assets with long lives, long more than a year, right? Think of any asset that you would buy with the intention to use it for many, many years, like a car, like a truck, like a building, like a computer, right? Like machinery, furniture. These are all called property, plants, and equipment. Now, every account or every type of asset within this category also has something called accumulated depreciation. In fact, all of them except for land. Land is the only asset, the only asset in this category that does not depreciate. But cars and buildings and so on, they depreciate as you use them or as time goes on. And so 
attached to each one of these is a what we call a contra asset okay so accumulated depreciation is a contra asset it gets the name contra asset because we classify it as an asset but it has a negative value meaning that the higher it goes and i typically use the symbol xa the more contra assets you have the less your assets are actually worth So for instance, let's say you have a building which you paid $500,000 for. So the building's cost would be 500,000. But if you have accumulated depreciation, I'm just gonna write AD here, and that accumulated depreciation is 150,000, well really this building today to you has a book value or a net book value, right? So I'll say this is the net value of the building. 350. And you see, as this number increases, this number will decrease. That's why we call it a contra asset. You'll see in the next class when we actually write out the financial statements, how to put this. For now, we're just kind of classifying things. Then you've got intangible assets and goodwill. So intangible assets, we briefly spoke on this in class one. These are assets that are Intangible, meaning they do not have a physical substance or they do not have a physical presence. You can't see them in a room with you. You cannot touch them, but they still count as assets. And typically this is, uh, these are like rights to things, right? When you have the right to something and you're able to generate revenue or profits because of that right, well, that's an asset. The right is an asset. So patents, right? A patent is... Uh, you know, the right to produce something and no one else has the right to copy it, right? So you invent something, you patent it, and now for X number of years, nobody can copy you, right? So the patent has value. Copyrights, trademarks, you have a list here, franchises, licenses, right? These are all assets. Then you've got goodwill, which is often classified as an intangible asset because you cannot see it but it's a very specific thing. Whenever one company buys another company, the company being acquired has a net asset value, right? So I'm gonna write here net asset value, NAV, which is the total assets minus the total liabilities. So, and let's say just for the sake of the example, total assets are 100 million and total liabilities are 40 million, okay? This means that this company has a net asset value of 60 million, okay? This is the company that is being acquired. Now you say, oh, I wanna buy this company, I'm going to acquire this company and I'm going to pay 70 million you are going to pay $10 million more than the net asset value of the building. Well, that 10 million would be classified as goodwill. That's all it is. Goodwill, the asset goodwill is acquired only during an acquisition of another company, no other situation. And it is the amount you are paying in excess of what the company is worth on paper. And why would a company, why would we pay more? Well, you're paying really for all of the things that wouldn't appear on your balance sheet, right? Like if the company has a very good reputation, well, that's worth money, but it doesn't appear on a balance sheet. If the company has really good employees, really good management, um, you, you see all these things, some trade secrets, right? All these things are worth money. People would pay for those things, but you don't see them on a balance sheet. So they don't appear in the net asset value. That's what, that's, what goodwill is for. And then when you put it all together, it kind of looks like this, right? You've got your current assets first and you write them in order of liquidity. Now, okay guys, so that's it for that preview. As I said, I hope you enjoyed it. If you do want to watch the entire video and more like it, head over to my website, www.profjohnk.com, find the course you're interested, sign up, and I'll see you in class.